This is a really brief introduction to CICD and the learning outcomes are really just to describe the key elements of CICD and explain how CICD supports agile uh, software development lifecycle methodologies. So CI stands for continuous integration and it is just the process of uh, frequently integrating uh, code changes and uh, the key feature of continuous integration is that it usually incorporates automated building and testing so rather than having the developer build and test uh, by hand we have the developer uh, write uh, scripts for automating the building and at the same time scripts for automating uh, the testing such that every time uh, a change is made the uh, work product can be rebuilt in the exact same way and tested in the same way. So it's always being built the same every time and tested the same every time. And continuous delivery uh, refers to uh, creating a complete deliverable after each successful integration. So in addition to uh, doing the build and doing the testing, there is also uh, kind of the, the complete work product is, uh, is delivered at the, at the same time. And again, this would be automated as well. So instead of having the developer do this by hand in an ad hoc uh, method, we script it so that after every, every change, the build is the same, the test is the same, and the assembly of the, the deliverable is exactly uh, the same. So uh, an underlying theme for CI CD is uh, automation and uh, predictability. And then continuous deployment uh, takes this one step further. So it's everything in continuous delivery plus deploying to production without intervention. And so the idea here is this is particularly for uh, web applications where in the continuous integration phase, we build and test. If the tests fail, if the build fails or the test fails, we don't uh, go any further. But if the build passes and the testing all passes, uh, then we use uh, continuous delivery to create uh, or to assemble all the, the built uh, work products. And then the continuous deployment piece would be to automatically take that and uh, deploy it to production. So in the case of a, of a web application, um, it would be updated uh, live for the public without any uh, manual intervention. Obviously, if an organization is moving to continuous uh, deployment, they would really have to have a lot of confidence uh, in their build process and in their uh, testing process. But that's the idea behind uh, continuous deployment. And obviously, there's a, kind of a tight relationship between agile development methodologies and uh, CICD. So in the Agile model, you are frequently turning around uh, features uh, or development in the code base. And because it's so short and uh, frequent, we don't want developers spending a lot of time building and testing by hand. So the idea is we, if the building and testing is automated, uh, we can incorporate feature changes or feature updates much more uh, frequently. And I'll just make a little bit of a comment about the various uh, project environments and what we're trying to achieve with uh, CICD and also how containers might uh, relate to this as well. So as a project is being uh, produced there might be up to, or there may be more, but there might be at least uh, three different environments. The development environment, the building environment, the testing, the staging environment, and then the final uh, production environment. So the development environment, this is 
uh, what is present on each developer's uh, workstation. So that's going to include their operating system, their software development tools, uh, and, and so on. And uh, it might be, for certain applications, it might be possible that the developer uh, can run uh, the application, at least on a scaled down version of the production data for the application. So the possibility of running everything locally. And then you have the, uh, the build environment. So if we're utilizing CI CD, so this is going to be some kind of centralized server separate from the developer's workstation that is going to per perform uh, the CI CD build. So the developer makes a change, they commit and push that change to a centralized repository, and that, uh, that push triggers a CI CD build. And so this environment is going to include the, the software development tools as well, and also the ability to test, again, probably on a scaled uh, down uh, data set. And then in addition to the build environment, we also may have a separate uh, testing or staging environment. So this would be a, uh, a centralized server that is going to match the production environment as, uh, as closely as possible. There isn't going to be any live public data, but it's going to be similar uh, to what would be encountered uh, in, in production. So hopefully everything is going to be uh, caught at the automated uh, building and testing stage. Uh, but in some situations, we might decide to have a, a separate testing and staging environment uh, just to just as a sanity check before uh, delivering the, the product to production. And then finally, we have the, the production environment, which is these are the actual servers used by the public and or uh, live uh, live customers. And I just want to make a, a quick uh, comment about the possible role of containers in this entire uh, process. And uh, certainly without containers, there are risks that the differences between the development, build, test, and uh, production environments are going to produce certain inconsistencies. So uh, the developer uh, as far as the developer is concerned, the system is working on their development environment, but it fails to work as expected either on the build uh, environment or the test environment or uh, the production environment. And one of the ways we can kind of minimize these inconsistencies between environments is to use utilize containers uh, throughout. So if uh, containers are being used in all four uh, environments, then we would expect there's going to be very little difference between development and, uh, and production. And the idea behind using containers at every stage is that uh, we're striving for the goal of uh, creating a, uh, that, um, striving for a goal that the, the production system uh, as closely match, matches as closely as possible uh, the development uh, system. What we're aiming for is a, a process that's going to be automated and, uh, and reproducible. And so utilizing uh, containers uh, for development can, can help with that.